this video, we're going to prove an important theorem by Cayley. It goes on to say that every group is isomorphic to a subgroup of A of S for some S. A of S is all their mappings, all the one-to-one -one onto mappings from S to S. If you like watching mathematical proofs like this, you should consider subscribing to my channel. Now, as the statement of the theorem says, for an appropriate set S, well, I'm going to let S be the set G. Now, I'm going to get jammed up on this proof if I continue the way I plan on continuing. And I'm doing that to motivate why you have to take a step back and do something before you can continue. So how about I define a mapping phi that goes from G to, not A of S, I'm letting S be G, so A of G. And we define it by phi takes an element from G and it produces a mapping. Let's call the mapping tau sub G. Okay, so I want to show that this is a home, it, this is an isomorphic mapping. Well, first I have to show its homomorphism. So, let G1, G2 be in phi. So I need to show that phi of G1 times G2 is ultimately phi of G1 times phi of G2. Well, we know this is one element in G. When you compose two elements in G, you get one element. So let's think of that as one element for a moment. So that's tau sub G1, G2. Now, if I can say that that's tau 1, G, tau sub G1 times tau sub G2, well, this is phi of G1 and this is phi of G2, and that equal sign is valid, this equal sign is valid. If all the equal signs are valid, I showed that this is a homomorphism, but I don't have this one. This is why we need to stop from right below what I did there. We need to disregard that, and we have to look at the mapping tau, it's tau sub g itself, and see if it is a homomorphism. Okay, so let us do that. Now, if you choose to, you can put what I'm about to write at the, at the very top and put this down a little bit later. But need to see it motivated in my opinion. Okay, so how about we define tau sub g that goes from g to g by how it reacts on some element of G. And all it's going to do is multiply that element on the right by G. Now, I want to pause for a moment and talk about what that means. If you were to look at the Cayley table, you would list all the elements of G up here. And at some point, you'd find G. And there's that column whose heading is G. And on the left, you have all the elements. Let me write this for all X in the set G. So, you know, you have G1, G2, G3, eventually X, G, and so on. Okay. So now, what goes in here? What goes into this rectangular box? Well, G1 
times G goes right there, and G2 times G goes right here, and G3 times G goes right here. This mapping, tau sub G, just gives you the entries in column G. Well, you know what? You know, as I said, we have a G1 and G, a G2, a G3, eventually a G. So you'll have G, G, and X, G. I can do the same for G2. I can define tau G sub 2 to be multiply by our multiply this element on the right by G2. So you have G3 times G2, you'll have G times G2, you'll have X times G2. Every element in the group gets multiplied on the right by G2. Well, that gives you the column I just highlighted. So that's what this mapping is really doing. It's just giving you the column G, the co oops, the column G in the Cayley table. Don't know much about history, but there might be a reason why they call this the Cayley theorem. Okay, so now we need to show what this does. Okay, so let G and H be in G. What does this do to X? Well, again, GH is one element in G. What does tau do to X? It multiplies on the right by GH. Well, this becomes XG times H. But XG, oh, I'm multiplying on multiplying x on the right by g. That's the same as x tau g. Now this is an element in g. It's xg. It's an element in g. And now I'm multiplying it on the right by h. Oh, oh, that's the same as that element on the left times tau or acted on by tau h. But that equals x times tau g tau h. So this is equal to this. And that implies that tau g h is in fact, let's write that correctly. It did say over here t h. That is tau g h is equal to tau g times tau h. Okay, now I want to see one thing. So, we want to also show that these are in A of S. Okay, I mean, I can get away with saying A of S because I define somewhere that S is G but let's call it S sub G. Now, is this function on to? Let Y be in G. Now, Y is equal to uh, Y G inverse or Let's just show it. Let's not claim it. That being acted on by tau g, that's yg inverse times g, which is y times gg inverse, which is ye, which is y. So what we can conclude by this is that tau g is on to. This implies that tau g is 
on to? Is it one to one? Suppose x tau sub g is equal to y tau sub g. Well, that's if and only if xg, that's xg, is equal to yg. Groups have the cancellation property. That means x equals y. That's one to one. Now be more careful. Maybe you should say somewhere, let x and y be in g. Okay. So, what we have is, we just showed that tau sub g is in a of s or a of g for all g in the group. Why is that? Because we never said a word about g, other, little g, other than the fact that lied in g. You know, if you can't say, well, you showed that it's true for g, I'll accept this true for g1. But wait a minute, that g2, I, I, I question that. Well, <laughs> think again. It works for g2 as well. So now, couple of things now. What phi map G2 is in A of G? We just proved that. In fact, I'm actually going to move this below. I'm actually going to even cut it. Okay, let S equal G stays. So now I can talk about this. We define phi from G to A of G by this definition. Well, is it a homomorphism? Is it a homomorphism? Yes, because phi of G1, G2 is equal to tau of G1, G2 which we showed is equal to tau of g1 times tau of g2. This here is phi of g1. This here is phi of g2. This implies that phi is a homomorphism. All I have to do now is show that the kernel is just the identity mapping. Because phi is just a set of mappings. Just have to show that the kernel of phi is that. Because let's write this down. What is the kernel of phi, which I'll call k. If I can show that k is just the el just contains the identity element, then I can say that g is isomorphic to a of g. And that's all I want to show. Okay, so let, um, let k. Let K be in the kernel. Then phi of K is equal to it is equal to tau sub K such that X times tau sub K is x. That is, this is the identity mapping. It didn't do anything. Okay, so 
let's think now. Clearly, tau e, when it operates on x, it's also going to give us back x. So now, somehow I have to show that this mapping and this mapping are equal. We also know that x on tau sub e, which is x e, is equal to x. Now, this statement here is for all x and g. Even this statement is for all x and g. Well, how about we let x be e? Let x equal e. That is e times tau k. On one hand, it is equal to e k. On the other hand, it's in the kernel, so it just gives me back e. Ah, k is e. That implies that the kernel is just tau sub k, sorry, tau sub e, which is the identity. If the only element in the kernel is the identity, then we can go from an isomorphism from that, sorry, from a homomorphism between these two sets. We can go from a homomorphism to these sets to those sets being congruent. Okay, if the kernel is E. And another reason that's true is because if G is a homomorphism, if there's a homomorphism between G and A of G, and you divide, say, G by the kernel, now you can say that they're isomorphic. But the kernel is just the element E. And G mod E is just G. So there's two arguments where we conclude this. And that completes this proof. If you like watching mathematical proofs like this, subscribe to my channel. All we do here is mathematical proofs. Have a great day, guys. Please tell your friends and families and, of course, enemies about my channel. Hope to see you in the next video. Watch and learn.